Something's Brewing takes us to East Hampton. We sit down with the owners of Fat Orange Cat as they are making some changes to their business. We find out why. Sheila Mullen joining us now. She's one of the owners of Fat Orange Cat. Nice to see you again. Great to see you. So, we're gonna get a little serious just to start off. Mm -hmm. um, I know things have been really challenging. COVID has really affected obviously so many people, but for you, and your family, it's really, truly been a nightmare. Yeah. Um, and yeah. because of that, you've kind of took, taken a step back and changed some things with the business here in East Hampton. Yeah, when COVID hit, clearly we closed the tasting barn because it has to be packed here because mm -hmm. we don't even sell a glass of beer, didn't, just did tastings. We had another small business we sold since we moved that to outside. So we were coping and making it and really had ramped up distribution. Luckily, we're part of the collective 12% beer project. Mm -hmm. So we were staying alive. But then um, we personally, our family, we got hit mm -hmm. and kind of blindsided because we had been ridiculously careful. Um, but my mom, who never left but for doctor's appointments, needed some help in Maine. Mm -hmm. And that's where the nightmare began, where she wasn't well. It turns out a cardiologist office nurse had exposed nine patients pr prior to my arrival. Mm -hmm. And um, my mom got very sick. She did not make it. Mm -hmm. I came home, you thank you. Um, and I came home and luckily uh, I made it back to Connecticut and that before I got sick. And mm -hmm. then I, I've been on a roller coaster ride with it as well. Mm -hmm. But I mean, considering how sick I was, my doctor recently said I'm doing great mm -hmm. with just some minor symptoms still. Mm -hmm. But it impacted our businesses dramatically. Sure. Um, we closed Dexter's that weekend. We sold it. Um, we really settled in this winter and said, what's really working with our business? What's really important? How are we going to get through this? How do we want to go forward? And that's why we decided to close the tasting barn permanently. Um, we didn't open up the open air drive through because we've still been trying, I've been still battling some stuff, but we decided we're ready to go. Mike's been brewing small batch. We have large batch also and we're so psyched to come back, but not like it used to be here. Right, but you're still making great beer, <laughs> so people will still see your product out there. And the open air drive through was really fun, mm -hmm. and like I said, through 12%, we're out everywhere, and the New York metropolitan area in a big way. Mm -hmm. And so we figured out, and I think a lot of people talk about silver linings sure. and rebooting and regrouping and mm -hmm. the new normal, and we're really uh, the epitome of that both personally and with our business. And I think people also, some people don't realize that where you brew your small batches, this is your home, Yeah. right? So you live here and you do this kind of out of the garage. Yeah. Um, and again, you brew those bigger batches at 12%. Yeah. So that's, I mean, to have yeah. all these people at your home every weekend. Yeah, it was, we had outgrown the space for mm -hmm. sure anyway and we're trying to really figure things out. Even with the new parking, we would fill up, mm -hmm. um, had to hire more people, and it was really not great for our little community, I think, because then there'd be cars outside, mm -hmm. and it just, we had outgrown it at, here, the tasting barn, and um, it was, you know, it was a really great pivot for us that we probably would not have made without um, my getting sick and losing my mom. Mike, it smells great in here. <laughs> this is where the magic happens. It does. <laughs> nice to see you. Good to see you again. Brewer, owner, um, you have probably been busier than ever. <laughs> we have been busy. We've kind of changed our business model a bit, mm -hmm. as we talked about prior. Right. And uh, But we still can, uh, are still brewing beer here on the facility. Yeah. Um, it's great to be in here. Uh, let's talk about the first beer, this okay. Walkabout Sour. Yes, uh, we are planning next Saturday to have a Walkabout uh, Sour Cherry Orange Con combination, which is actually a brand new combination for us, so mm -hmm. we're kind of uh, anxious to see how that goes. So this is a series? Yes, we try to have at least one or two walkabout sours available for our Saturday pickups. Okay, 
Um, it depends on the fruits and if I can get them. Fruits are very hard to get now. Mm -hmm. So it depends on if I can get the fruits delivered in time. Delivery is another problem because they come from California. Okay. So if everything is uh, arrives on time, I typically have two st different types of sours available for that Saturday. And you can only get it here, the small batch, This is right? the only place you can get these small batch beers, yes. So how does this new a walkabout taste? You could taste the cherry notes and the orange notes? You will, yeah, you'll be able to taste both the cherry and the orange. Uh -huh. Now the question is, which taste comes first? Is okay. it the orange and then the <laughs> cherry or the cherry then the orange? It's really cool the way they blend because they're never blended together. There's always a little bit of each one that mm -hmm. comes through. So it's pretty fun to That's play with great. that. I always and I also play with the, the with the ratios. Some of the fruits tend to be more sour, mm -hmm. like the cherry is more sour. It's a thicker fruit, so I may have to dial that back a bit. Okay. Uh, as as compa compared to the ratio of the orange, we'll right. see. Yeah. And next up, you have a Belgian style. We do. We have a, a beer de garde that I had already brewed, and it's uh, bottle conditioned. And we're we're selling that in 750 milliliter Belgian um, bottles. Mm -hmm. The, uh, those will be available for that next Saturday as well. And talk about how that tastes. That tastes, um, the, the focus on a beer de garde is not the yeast, which is typically a, a Belgian, and it's not about the hops. It's really about the grains, the grains that you actually put together to brew the beer. It, you try to highlight the, the, the grains. It's very malty beer. Um, it's typically around 6 or 7 percent ABV, so it's very easy drinking. Mm -hmm. uh, there's blonde versions and there's dark ver versions. This version is going to be a blonde version. Ooh, nice. Yes. So you have two beers coming up. The first is a farmhouse ale. Right. Uh, the farmhouse is, is a Belgian style beer. It's like a Belgian Saison. It's about anywhere from 4.5 to 6 percent ABV. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, uh, I'm in the process of brewing that today. So if nature works and the yeast does what it's supposed to, it will be available for next Saturday as well. Great. I'm excited for that. I love those easy drinking Belgians. Very easy drinking, yeah. right. And then last but not least, you have an, an IPA. I'm going to do an IPA here. Typically, I don't do IPAs here, but I plan on doing an IPA with a new hop called Sativa. It's not spelled with an S. It's spelled with a C, mm -hmm. Sativa. And I've never used the hop. I don't, haven't seen it around anywhere, so I'm excited to see how that how that formulates into the beer. Yeah, excited to work with it, huh? Now, I'm not quite sure that'll be available for next Saturday, but it'll certainly be available the Saturday after. It depends on the dry hopping schedule and the yeast and all of that. Okay. So, we'll see. And then, um, personally, are you still making all cats or gray in the dark? <laughs> we still are My making favorite. all cats. We, uh, we do that large batch, actually, down at, uh, in North Haven. Okay. Um, just a side note, we actually won an award with that beer. That doesn't surprise me. Um, this past winter, I entered that beer into United States Beer Tasting Champs, mm -hmm. and we won the best of New England. Great. We didn't make it to the finals, but that's okay. Well, you're number one in my book. Thank you very much. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. So I know we talked about it, but the open air market, it started yesterday. People can just go online on what, on a Wednesday? On a Wednesday uh, mm -hmm. at around noontime, the store will open. That's awesome. So they order what they want, they come here on a Saturday, they pick it up and they leave. That's correct. <laughs> All right. Yeah. And then uh, congratulations, five years. Time has flied, climbed. It's amazing. That's so great. So Later you're going to have a big party, right? <laughs> We're going to have a party down at North Haven at 12% on uh, August 22nd, which is a Sunday. Mm -hmm. um, and we're hoping for good weather. And people can just show up, right? They can just show up. Yeah. yeah. All yes. right. And they're there all day. They're going to be celebrating you. You have a lot of your uh, beers there on tap. We will. Okay. We'll some, I'll bring some small batch as well. So, all right. Great. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So look for that. All right. Well, thanks right. for having us. Well, thanks nice for coming. Nice to see you both again. Great to see you. Cheers. Something's brewing at Fat Orange Cat. Cheers. Cheers.